You may be familiar with the sensation of anxiety and its impact on our lives. Perhaps it arises when faced with a significant work presentation, triggering a series of unsettling emotions. It could be worries concerning finances, relationships, or the uncertainty of the future. At times, the triggers may even elude our understanding. Regardless of the cause, many of us have encountered anxiety, a natural human emotion that manifests intermittently. It serves as an internal alarm system, alerting us to heightened stress or perceived threats, be they physical or emotional in nature. However, for some individuals, particularly those living with an anxiety disorder, this pervasive feeling may rarely find respite. The challenge lies in the constant state of fight mode that engulfs me. I find myself attempting to suppress the discomfort, engaging in a futile battle against the pain, only to be left feeling defeated when it persists. This defeat then triggers an automatic response, plunging me into a state of low mood where I perceive the entire day as wasted. Sometimes I remember I was allowing the pain to overpower me because, let's be honest, it can be an exhausting struggle day after day and sometimes I simply lack the energy to keep fighting. When facing discomfort in the body, our natural reaction is to tense the bodies and curl ourselves up into a tight ball and try to mentally block out the pain. That was my reaction for several years, but it never worked. Now, if you are here watching this video, it is possible that you too have not found a cure in those usual reactions. After several defeats with that discomfort in the body, I realized that the cure was in not labeling him as an enemy. We want to defeat it. We want to get rid of it, make it disappear. But here lies the problem. The more we resist, the stronger it becomes. It's like being caught in a double bind. We desperately want it gone, yet our efforts to eliminate it only make it worse. I'm sure many of you can relate to this frustrating cycle. However, what if we were to take the opposite approach? What if, instead of treating discomfort as our adversary, we welcomed it as a friend? What if we acknowledged its presence and allowed it to come closer? By doing so, we open ourselves to a deeper understanding. Even more important is to realize that it is not your true self that fears those sensations, but your separate self. It has senseless desire to survive, which is the root cause of fear. It comes from the mind that is pathologically crippled by fear of death. It is the body that undergoes the process of mortality, not the essence of who you truly are. By recognizing your true nature beyond the physical, the fear of death loses its grip. You understand that your existence transcends the limitations of the body. It is essential to detach yourself from the thoughts coming from your mind, disassociate your identity from it. Recognize that this discomfort does not belong to anyone. It is not happening to you. Why? Because you are not merely the body. When you still cling to the belief that you are solely the physical form, it creates resistance towards emotions and reinforces the notion that life happens to you as an individual. By disidentifying with the body, you can cultivate a sense of detachment that allows you to observe the sensations without being consumed by them. You will accept those sensations. You will befriend them. This shift in perspective not only reduces resistance, but also opens up the possibility of finding gratitude amidst the pain present in the body. When we approach discomfort, we need to be honest with ourselves. We must ask the question, could I live with this sensation for the rest of my life? At first, we might find ourselves saying no, and that's okay. It's a reflection of our deeply ingrained habit of rejecting and avoiding discomfort. But here's the remarkable part. As we repeatedly face the discomfort, allowing it to be present, something shifts within us. The resistance starts to weaken. That initial no gradually softens, dissolving bit by bit. You're now understanding the depths of what surrender truly means. You are now aware that trying to get rid of that discomfort was the real problem. Relax. Don't resist. Identify the source of that feeling, whether it comes from the stomach or the heart. 
One of the most powerful gratitude practices we can take up is to identify the pain. It is often hidden, or we have just accepted it as a natural and reasonable response to a very challenging situation. By recognizing it and accepting it, we are able to loosen its hold over us. By ceasing to identify ourselves with our mind, we no longer feel powerless in relation to our emotions. Do you see those thoughts that come and go? Just accept their presence. Nothing more. Don't let those thoughts amplify the sense of powerlessness you already feel amidst your body discomfort. Gratitude, on the other hand, can lead us to understand that we can choose how to react. If we can become aware of the choices we make, we can reflect on whether we are choosing to respond with an inner attitude of gratitude or resentment. Embrace gratitude as a powerful force in your lives, allowing it to flourish by cultivating appreciation for the things you can genuinely be grateful for. Instead of trying to find gratitude within the pain itself, which can often prove challenging, you can focus on nourishing gratitude through various aspects of your lives. It could involve fostering gratitude for nature, cherishing moments with your children, or appreciating the place you call home. When we learn to let go of resistance, life undergoes a profound transformation. Our suffering stems from our tendency to resist what is unfolding in the present moment. However, if we can cultivate a state of relaxation and non-resistance, if we can find acceptance with whatever is happening, we will start to discover the inherent simplicity of life. <laughs>